Good morning. Today is Thursday, September 15th, 2022. Several years ago, there was an article in the New York Times, and the title of the article was Dr. Seuss File. Yes, they found it in a box. So Dr. Seuss, whose actual name was Theodore Seuss Giesel, died in 1991. A number of years later, his wife was going through some boxes that were laying around the house, and they opened a box that had not been opened since he passed away. And inside the box, they found a file, and the file was titled Noble Failures. And it was filled with drawings that Dr. Seuss had done that he was unable to find a place for or a use for in any of his books. Noble failings. Our parsha this week, the parsha of Kisavo, begins with the mitzvah of Bikurim, first fruits. And it goes like this. Hashem commands when we come into the land of Israel, and this is talking about when the Beis Amigdash is standing, the Holy Temple is standing in Jerusalem. The farmer who grows crops should take from the first fruits that grow at the beginning of the summer, and he should bring them to the Beis Amigdash, the Holy Temple in Jerusalem, and he will come before the Kohen, the priest who is there, and he will recite the following text. He'll say the following words. And our sages explain in the Talmud that this text is a necessary, required component of this mitzvah. In fact, not only does it have to be said verbatim, word for word, it has to be said in Hebrew. It cannot even be said in English or another translation, another language. Arami Ovedavi, Vayered Mitzrayma. We went down to Egypt as a small group, but we became mighty there. Vayareu Osanu Hamitrim, and the Egyptians mistreated us, they made us slaves. Vanitzakel Hashem, we cried out to God from our persecution. Vayishma Hashem as Kolenu, God heard our cries, and God took us out of Egypt. God brought us to this place, meaning the land of Israel, and gave us this land, a land flowing with milk and honey. And now I am bringing to you, the farmer says, I am bringing to you, God, the first fruits of this year's crop that you, God, have given to me. And I bow before you in gratitude and in praise. Now, many is many. Many of us are familiar with this passage, part of the passage, from the Pesach Seder. On Passover, we quote the beginning of this passage, the first four verses of that text, of that statement. That is our way of telling the story of our persecution in an exodus from Egypt. So we recite those four verses and then we explicate them, filling in the details of the persecution and the slavery and then the redemption. It's curious, though, that the authors of the Haggadah about 2,000 years ago chose this passage from the Torah to tell the story and not a passage from the book of Shemos, the book of Exodus, where the narrative actually occurs. So, in the past, we've discussed several reasons for choosing this passage and not a different passage, but my friend and colleague, Rabbi Ariel Rakovsky, points out an important lesson from the Haggadah that we can derive to deepen our understanding of our portion and the season in which we now find ourselves, because every year we read this portion just days before Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of the Jewish New Year. Now, this text is the statement of a farmer in Israel, a pilgrim, who has brought their first fruits to Jerusalem as an offering to God. And this statement is a brief 
retelling of our national story, which is one reason why we borrow it on Passover, because Pesach celebrates the creation of our national identity, so that's when we tell our national story. Though, on Pesach, we only quote the first part, the part that relates to the persecution in Egypt and the deliverance, the redemption from Egypt, which is connected to the themes of Passover. But in our Torah portion, those four verses serve as the preamble, the the background, the introduction, leading up to the farmer expressing gratitude to God for coming into the land of Israel and being given the land of Israel and growing crops and receiving produce from the land of Israel. But the first three words that the farmer says are quite shocking in this context. Arami Ovid Avi. Now, our commentators are divided on what those words mean. Either those words mean our story begins with us as pagans serving idols, that's one opinion, or Another opinion in how to translate those words Arami Ovid Avi is, our story begins with us as persecuted and vulnerable and weak. Now, either way, it's not a very flattering image. And the curious thing is, we're the ones telling the story. There's an African proverb that goes like this. Until the lion learns how to write. Every story will glorify the hunter. History is written by the victor from the point of view of the victor. So if we're the ones who are writing this story of ours and we are the ones who are telling this story about ourselves, Why don't we make ourselves look better? Why do we publicize the fact that we started out as pagans or the fact that we started out as weak and vulnerable? So the answer to this question is supplied in the Talmud in connection with the Passover Haggadah. Our rabbis say, Maschil begenus umasayim bishvach. We begin by describing our low position, our humble beginnings, and then we finish with talking about our praise, where we have reached, how high we have come. The way we tell our story is to start with our low point in order to highlight and appreciate our ascent. And we're not embarrassed. We're not ashamed of our earlier low state. We don't hide it. In fact, we emphasize it because it is the springboard from which to rise. You may have heard this line, the three hardest things to say in the English language are, I love you, Worcestershire sauce, and I was wrong. Now, that's a lesson that our rabbis teach us in connection with Pesach. But from Passover, we can apply this lesson to Bikurim, to the first fruits, and to each of us as we approach God on Rosh Hashanah. We have made mistakes. It takes fortitude to acknowledge this. But when we do, then we can work our way back. And not just back, but up even higher. We should be proud of our noble failures, 
as we rise above them. My friends, I want to wish you a great day. I look forward to seeing you soon in person.